So let's talk about how Ohio State, the Big Ten, and early enrollees might benefit from a spring season, as much as that sucks. And all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, Ken folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related. Sports related, we have a good time. Today, I want to talk about how the spring season might work and what ideas have already been batted around by Big Ten coaches and some athletic directors. This after news, of course, the earlier this week, the Pac-12 and the Big Ten have decided that they will postpone their football seasons, canceling fall football and expecting to play in the spring. Now, Ryan Day has been out with what he thought was a good idea. First, stumping for his team and trying to get them games in the fall. It looks like the death knell for that is already come and gone. And we're on to talking about the spring football season for Ohio State. And I am really hurting for these players as this is the most talented Ohio State football team anybody has seen since 2014 with 10 draft eligible starters that all were going to be outstanding, including Justin Fields, who was a front runner for the Heisman Trophy and could have led them to a legitimate national championship. To say nothing of whether or not we have two national championships in like six months because right now the Power 3 ACC, SEC, and Big 12 are still planning to play football. And if the Pac-12 and the Big 10 play, they might have their own championships. But we still have the Sun Belt, the American, Conference USA, and the like continuing to play football in the fall. Now, Day would like to see an eight-game season followed by a full season of football in the fall. So an eight-game spring season where the early enrollees get to play as soon as they get to campus. This is interesting, right? Because it's not about whether or not they're talented enough to play right away. As an example, Derek Stingley Jr. got into LSU early, and Dave Aranda put him in with the Wolves at defensive back, and he was so good that Aranda really wanted to play him in the Fiesta Bowl against Central Florida. They already knew what kind of a player he was going to be, and he'd only been with the team for a couple of weeks. The same thing could have been said about DJ Uyungagale, who got to campus early in time to help the team practice for their national championship run, ultimately ending in a loss to LSU, but Brian Brzee was also there. So you've seen these players show up, and you've seen them be immediately ready to play, and many of these guys are already expecting to enroll early in January. And this could benefit Ohio State in particular in ways that we've never seen before. Because while Travion Henderson does not get to play his high school football senior season, Virginia is canceling fall football, moving its season to the spring. We also should think about what he might be able to do, which is be probably running back one at Ohio State. This, of course, if Trey Sermon decided to just forego playing in the spring and go into the NFL draft or try to transfer or any number of things I'm sure that all the Ohio State players are looking at. But that would be kind of cool to see him and others. It also opens the door for guys like Tristan Lay and Emeka Egbuka and JT Tuimolau. Guys that have not made decisions on where they plan to play football. And in the state of Washington, they're not going to play high school football either. So we could be six months without any of these guys playing football. And they might commit and sign to play somewhere where they know they're going to play meaningful football games in February or January, and that's where we are at right now. As Purdue head coach Jeff Brom told Pat Forty about, well, a plan for them to play eight games beginning the end of February with a championship coming in May, and then play 10 games starting in October where the start of the Big Ten season and go conference only from there. Now, this is also wild because we have been talking about player safety for over a decade now, and we've done things to try to make the game safer. We, re re we reduced the number of practices. We have reduced the helmet-to-helmet -helmet collisions. We've taken extensive steps to try to make sure that guys that are injured don't go back into the game in ways that they can hurt themselves further. We have stepped up our drug testing. We are also trying to get more pain reducing technologies instituted we have done stem we have done stem and ice we have done hyperbaric chambers we are taking all sorts of measures to try to get better and yet the thing that we know that does the most damage to a football player is playing football games 
And if you're going to play 20 or at a minimum 18 games inside of eight months, you can't make an argument that that is safe. And we continue to fall back on this thing about what do the kids want to do until the kids say that they want to get paid and then people get upset about it. I'm out there on this. I think the kids should be paid. I think the kids should have more athlete rights because college football is still a sport where to date they don't have a say. Now we're also going to see legislation submitted by New Jersey Senator Cory Brooks, who or Cory Brooks, um, Cory, what's Cory's last name? Now I got to check. Cory Booker. I was almost there. He played football at Stanford, and he and others are trying to draft legislation that would allow for athlete rights and sharing the revenue generated by these universities with those athletes in addition to a lot of other things that I don't think are going to get all the way through Congress, but it's a very good starting point for what we see as equitable on the part of these student athletes. Now, I think there are pros and cons to all of this, and anything that makes the game more dangerous, I'm not going to be all in on, right? But like, I think that playing fall football is dangerous, and the train has left the station, so... I'm on it with you. I'm just going to be the guy in the corner going, did we think about this? Did we think about that? Because like you, I love college football. And if they're going to play, I can't stop them. And I won't stop them, right? I'm here to talk about college football and sports, period. Now, as sports and politics have become braided over the last, well, ever really, but the last three months in particular, I have really been interested in how these conversations go and how the coaches and players interact with each other. We also have these new medical enhancements that we're putting in to try to make sure that the game is safer for the players, but also safer for the student body, I hope, right? Now, what do you tell Travion Henderson and what do you tell Trey Sermon? They're not going to be the same thing, right? You're going to tell one guy one story that lends itself to him that you get to play more football than anybody else has ever played in the history of the sport as a true freshman, and you get to tell another guy, stick with us for this season that might bump into precisely the time when you are at your most marketable and most valuable in the history of your life. It's a tough sell. And some kids just want to play football for their universities, and I get that. And for those of you that root for your one university, I get that too. It's one of the reasons why I get so incensed when people are like, RJ, why are you an Ohio State fan? I thought you are an Oklahoma fan or LSU or Georgia. And you can't actually get around that I am a college football fan. Yeah, I got a team. But I love watching college football, and I love watching it played at its best. And if you are Appalachian State and you're st skull dragging people, I want to watch you play. If you're James Madison and you got what it takes to go up against North Dakota State, I want to watch you play. If you are one of the best college football teams of all time, LSU, I want to watch you play. And that's where we're at. Right now, I am in the position of saying it's August 13th. Let's see if we can get to September 26th with games still going on and go from there. But I'm glad that now we're having really good conversations about the spring season because I was very upset to know that Kevin Warren, the Big Ten, Larry Scott, and the Pac-12 did not have a plan. Put together a plan, guys. Make sure that the kids are taken care of. Make sure they get to play football. All right, that's it for me. Deuces.